On today's rendition of the Instagram poll tests, you guys kind of shocked me. Rather than picking the TikTok trend of the month, or even some more chocolate chip cookies, you guys picked the most viral lemon recipes. Which, to be very clear, I am fine with. I absolutely love lemon anything. Put it in a savory dish, a cookie, I don't care. But on today's menu, we're gonna start with some candied lemon slices, followed up with this mesmerizing blueberry lemon tart. For the main course, we'll be revisiting the pasta a limon, or lemon pasta, and then finishing everything off with the lemon posset. All of these look equally incredible, and I guess this means that summer is officially in full swing, so let's get right into this one. I figured the best way to start this one would be with these candied lemon slices from Nick Giovanni. And first of all, Nicholas, let's relax with that. This is a food show. But secondly, all you need is some sugar, water, and lemons. I hope you're all doing great today, my peeps. I wanted to take a second to say I missed you all very much last week. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff going on in the personal life right now, kind of good and bad stuff. One of the good things I should be able to share with you guys relatively soon, it's nothing major, but it's kind of cool. I think most of you should be out of school by now, so if you are, congrats, enjoy it. Um, to the rest of us 20 or 30 somethings who are just working, I guess enjoy the heat and bees in addition to your work. But this one is as easy as it gets. You slice up some lemons, drop those in equal parts water and sugar, simmer them away for about 45 minutes, and well, I thought this was gonna be easy. I walked away from these things for about five minutes, came back, and they were almost black. I don't know what happened here. Nick said to cook these for 45 minutes. I think I pulled these off at about the 35 minute mark. The temperature was obviously too high. I just mean how quickly they spiked to this deep amber candy stage. I was tempted to toss these and start over, but let's give them a quick taste and see if they're at all salvageable. Which one of the candy stages are these in? Softball, hard crack, burn. Also, why does this look like the danger hazardous symbol. Maybe that's a bad sign. Oh, they're burn. Ugh. I gotta do these again. Shit. For this next try, there's not a whole lot I'm gonna do different, mostly because there's not a whole lot I could even change. I attempted to find a lemon with maybe a little less pith. Obviously, that's the most bitter part of the lemon. I don't know if that'll help us. And then the main thing is obviously just lowering the temperature, keeping a much closer eye on this, not allowing that sugar to spike, and a tool to hopefully help us out with that is a thermometer. The soft crack stage of sugar begins at roughly 270 degrees Fahrenheit. That's kind of what I'm aiming for. It will increase after I pull it off the heat, but that should be fine. And right before the sugar began to spike once again, I pulled batch two out of the molten sugar mix, laid it on some parchment, I gave them a minute or two to set up, and they can't be any worse than the last ones, so let's give them a taste. All right, round two. I'm still not thrilled. I feel like these are a little tacky when I was putting them on the plate. Maybe I undercooked them this time. I don't know, but at least they're not straight up black. It still feels like something you shouldn't be eating, too. What the fuck? Ugh. These are still pretty awful. I don't know if I'm missing something. I don't know if they're supposed to be this bitter. I just don't like them. Maybe I didn't cut them thin enough and it's supposed to be a higher proportion of candy to lemon. This one's pretty darn thin though. No. All you taste is the bitterness of the pith. It's not even so much sour. It's like if you bit into an orange without trying to peel it first. And honestly, as I went back to look at that video again to see if I was missing anything, even Nick kind of looks like he doesn't really enjoy the taste when he eats it. I don't know. If you've ever had them and enjoyed them, please let me know in the comments. But for today, these things are retired. And next up on today's citrus circuit, we will be attacking this absolutely gorgeous blueberry lemon tart. I grabbed some flour and heavy cream, cornstarch and sugar, kosher salt, fresh blueberries, lots of eggs and vanilla, butter, honey, and a couple of lemons. Now out of all the recipes that we are tackling today, I think it's safe to say that this one is by far the most labor intensive. Each one of the three components is made completely from scratch, starting with the crust, which was pretty interesting in and of itself. It comes together completely in the food processor, 
and the ingredients are somewhere between a sugar cookie and a standard pie crust. And we didn't start off too hot, to be honest, because I had a miserable time with this damn crust from the creation of it to forming and baking. It was super brittle. I did chill it multiple times, but I think it's just so hot in New York finally. And I didn't realize that was kind of messing with everything at first. No matter how much flour I used, it was sticking to the counter. It was sticking to the rolling pin. It was kind of breaking all up when I was forming it in the pan. It was just a mess. Ignoring the fact that I still don't even have a tart pan either. It's just one of those utensils. I've never felt it worth it to buy. I make tarts so infrequently. And a smaller, more shallow pie dish usually does a fine job, so I plopped it in there. I pre-baked it before I got any of the filling. And I overcooked it. Again, that's two recipes in a row, but I don't know what's happening today. This one should at least still be usable. It's just a couple shades darker than I would have liked it to be. Especially because you have to whip up your homemade lemon curd, spread that down in a nice even layer, and then bake it off again. This time I added a little bit of foil on top to prevent it from browning any further. And then whipping up your homemade blueberry compote or jelly or jam, whatever you want to call it. And then the whole thing gets stuck in the fridge for a couple hours overnight, whenever you'd like to enjoy it. By the way, now that I'm thinking about it, what even is the definition of a tart? Is it just like a thinner, more creamy or condensed pie? An open pastry case containing a filling, i.e. an apple tart. Yeah, but there's plenty of pies that are open too. They don't have a top crust. Pumpkin pies come to mind. Why aren't those called pumpkin tarts? Those are thinner and creamy and more dense. What a mystery. Uh, if anybody knows out there, any of my pastry besties, let us know. And outside of the crust issues from earlier, the only other thing I was really worried about was the layers kind of bleeding together. If I didn't reduce them enough, if they were too liquidy and they would start kind of bleeding into each other, or if I didn't cook off the lemon curd enough and that happened, I don't know. I just had a vision and worry that I wasn't going to have those nice, clean, even layers. But I did let this sit in the fridge overnight to completely set, and when I tried to get a nice, clean slice, I was bummed at first that my concerns came to fruition, but I think it was just because I forgot to clean the knife in between each cut. Eventually, though, I did get a really nice looking piece, and it is time to try this one. I will come clean and admit that I trimmed this up a little bit. I just touched up the outer crust. I ran a knife along the layers there. Just so it looks better on camera and you can kind of see the layers in there. But we did lose a chunk of crust in the process. Mmm. Wow, this is good and worth all the hassle. It is the perfect balance of sweet to tart. I love the crust. It's got a little salty. It's almost like a cross between a graham cracker and a sugar cookie with a little extra salt. It is very good. The combination of the silky smooth filling with that super crunchy bottom is so good. And by far my favorite part is that lemon curd. It is to die for. Mmm. I would imagine any kind of berry you like would work with this too. Strawberries, whatever's in season. But overall, this is really, really good. And next up today is the only savory lemon dish we will be recreating. It is the pasta a limon under the guidance of not another cooking show. I grabbed some fettuccine and good quality parm, another fresh lemon and some butter. Now, I knew this one kind of sounded and felt familiar, but I couldn't exactly place it. And the reason is because almost a year ago now, I believe this was last August, I did a TikTok test where I remade Emily Mariko's famous lemon pasta, which is exactly this recipe. I don't know how I didn't know of this dish beforehand. Plenty of you guys let me know down in the comments of that video that this isn't just an Emily Mariko creation. This was actually a well-known dish. And if you're struggling to remember, uh, this might jog your memory. Instead of the fettuccine, we used bucatini, which is the long noodles with the little holes in the middle. And we also left the lemon halves after we juiced them. In the finished pot of pasta, and then as a garnish, as you plated everything up, it was a little weird. I've definitely never seen that anywhere. But just like last year, and almost exactly as we just made the authentic fettuccine alfredo from Joshua Weissman a few weeks back, you cook off your pasta and then combine everything in a bowl, off the heat with super finely grated parmesan, vigorously mix everything together until you get that creamy emulsion on the bottom. We will certainly be leaving all the already juiced lemon halves far away from the finished product. 
And have I finally mastered the art of the pasta water and cheese cream sauce? I don't want to say anything, I don't want to jinx it, but it sure does look pretty damn good. I'm not gonna say anything. Other than, you do see that sauce, right? Maybe the technique is like riding a bike. Once you get it, you get it, but it can be challenging before. <coughs> the hell? Mmm. <laughs> this is literally that fettuccine alfredo with lemon, and it is so delicious. I'll never not be amazed how cream-like of a substance you can get with just primarily pasta water and cheese, a little bit of butter. Like, look at this. If you told me a couple years ago there was no other dairy in here other than the cheese and a little butter, I would say you're full of it. Just remember to assemble off the heat, try to get good cheese, grate it down as finely as you can, and eat it pretty fast because sauces like this do set up and solidify pretty quickly. That's why I'm trying to eat it so fast and sweating through it. I basically eat in the entire bowl. That's how good this damn thing is, but I'm gonna try to stop myself because believe it or not, we've got one more really strong contender coming up. And lastly today, but certainly not least, is another one I have somehow never heard of before. It is the English Lemon Posset, and for that you will need some sugar, lots of fresh lemons, heavy cream, and that is it. I would imagine that you guys are having many thoughts, starting with where did I source these behemoth lemons? These are the size of grapefruits. I actually purposely saved them for this last one because once you zest them and chop them in half, you remove the flesh and we're gonna use each half as a little serving cup, which I'm a sucker for. Anytime I could eat or drink out of something that isn't a standard bowl or dish, I'm all about. And also, why did I leave such a seemingly simple layup of a recipe for the end? Usually I leave some of the harder stuff at the end of these videos. And to that I will say, watch your mouth. Firstly, we have seen many, many times that even though some recipes have little ingredients, that does not mean they are easy. They can often be very technical. But also, I kind of love the simplicity of this one. After all, this is a video dedicated to lemons. Why not end with something that should be unbelievably lemony, just you and the lemon right in your face. And possibly most importantly, it was something I've never seen before. So I was genuinely very curious to see how these were gonna come out. You just prep up the lemons, combine the sugar, cream, and lemon juice, pour them in your little cups, let it sit overnight in the fridge, and then you're done. And regardless of how these end up tasting, I'm just happy to be able to say that I finally delved into the world of lemon talk. I'm really excited for these. I feel like the average person's reaction to seeing this would be like, oh, it's just a lemon custard cream with cooked eggs or some kind of starch or something, but it is just three ingredients and somehow it magically sets up. It also smells really good. Oh, wow. This could not be simpler in its construction or appearance, but it is absolutely delicious. It's definitely more sour than it is sweet. It's not just one of those that's overwhelmingly sweet, like the average American dessert. It's just an intensely flavorful and mouth-watering pudding, almost. I imagine it comes together the same way a yogurt does. With that texture of creaminess one second and then almost dissolving in the next, it is really good. And if you were paying close enough attention, you might have noticed that one lemon half mysteriously vanished from one clip to the next. And that is because I stuck that one in the freezer for a couple of hours because I had a hunch that might make it even better. And I have it here, as you can see uh, the outside, quite firm inside, almost firm. Firmer than the other ones, that's for sure. It's almost like a barely melted ice cream. Wow. This is one of the best desserts I have eaten in a very long time. You have to be a lemon lover, for sure. I'm not gonna try to deny that. But the way this somehow still holds on to the creamy dissipation effect while still being colder, firmer, more refreshing, and mouth-watering, this is incredible. There's something so pure about this too that I love. It's three ingredients. You're eating out of the vessel that provided most of the flavor, some of the mass. I'm just really happy. And thank you guys for picking this one out of the poll.
Look the M, M without the A, D Put the burgers in my money, super lazy Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me Try and supersize my life with my A-team Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision